Welcome to today's message. I am Brother Zana David. This is an arrow request for all missions. You are welcome in Jesus' name. Let us pray. God, thank you for a time like this. We are happy to be a part of this season that you are waking up your children. Waking them up from slumber and calling those who has never knew you to yourself. Father, we pray that your word will come out with power. Draw us closer to yourself. Spirit of the Lord, speak to us your word of life. We rebuke every power of darkness that wants to steal your word from us. We destroy any power that wants to distract your children. We rebuke them all in the name of Jesus Christ. O Lord, let your word heal us. Let your word give us life. Not just life, but life in abundance. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, remind us once again that the way is still narrow. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Before we continue, please subscribe to this channel, The Narrow Ways Christ for All Nations. And don't forget to turn on the notification bell. I will really appreciate you if you like this video, comment and share this video so that it can beat algorithm. My videos are being suppressed across all my channels. Please share our videos, share the truth, and the Lord God Almighty will bless you in Jesus' name. Please subscribe to Uzana EE TV. And as you share this video, it on Facebook and YouTube, wherever you share it, the Lord God Almighty will bless you. Indeed. Today's topic is the way is still narrow. The way is still narrow. Why the world still? I purposely add the word still because liberalism is taking over everywhere. A lot of people feel that, oh, times are changing and things, things are evolving. Lots of nations are changing. Why don't we just make a little adjustment? But don't forget that the Bible is a book of all times. Look at Revelation. We are living in Revelation right now. The book written over 2,000 years ago. Look at the book of Daniel. The word of God remains forever. The word of God does not change. A lot of people have soon forgotten that there is a way, a broad way, that seems right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. There is a way that leads to life, and there is a way that leads to death. And the broad way, many, many, are they which are on the Broadway that leads to destruction? So, this is a reminder that the path, the way is still narrow. We can broaden the path because we are not the architect of this path, we are not the architect of this way. We have been called, it is a way out of destruction. We have been called by God's grace to walk on this way, not because of our own righteousness. Not because we are so holy. Not because we are too special than those who are in the world right now. But because of God's own grace, which is God's unmerited favor. He has lavished his love upon us. And we must make sure that we walk on this way. Today, early this morning, while I was still on my bed, the Lord spoke to me. And as he was speaking to me, I saw people with loads. He said, tell them, remind them that the way is still narrow. The way is not broad and it will never be broad. There are lots of people who tell us today, oh, it doesn't matter anything. You can do this, you can do that. In fact, if you look at the nations we are living in today, the things that used to be morally wrong have been, almost all of them have been, vetted they have been approved as a matter of fact some of the things that people were ashamed of 
that could land you in prison some years ago are the same things that if you speak against them today, you will be the one to go to prison. So the things that people used to do and when they are caught, they go to prison for it. Because the government and people feel that these things are not right. Today, they are open to people to do. And if you speak against them, you that speak against them, you become the victim. You become the one to go to prison. That is the kind of world we are living in right now. Jesus Christ says, because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall was good. We are living in a time that iniquity is abounding. Iniquity is increasing. Sin is increasing at, I can't even measure it. Not even a geometric progression. Sin is increasing so much that the love of many is worse in good. But do we need to sit down and adjust the, the laws of God because times are changing? Should we, is there any need to make any adjustment? Should we now like bring some bulldozer and bulldoze the way, the narrow path? Because we have some loads we need to take along. And because the road is so narrow, it can't contain us. Why don't we just gather and bring some bulldozers and bulldoze the way through? This path does not allow any kind of adjustment. The way is narrow. It is rough, but it is straight. If you stand at the end, you could see if you start at the beginning of it, you could see the end of it. And where does it lead to? It leads to eternal life. It is not a bent way. The cross is an old rugged cross. It doesn't change. It does not change at all. Let's look at the passage for today. Matthew chapter 7. 13 to 23. You can read from the screen. Enter ye at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in their hearts. Because straight is the way, straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or things of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by the fruit you shall know them. Not everyone that seeth unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils. And in thy name done many wonderful works. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Not that I don't know you. I never knew you. Even while you were doing those things, I never knew you because you were not on the narrow path. You were on the broad way. But you were practicing Christianity in hypocrisy. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Let's look at this passage very well. The beginning, verse 13. Enter ye, you must make your own resolution one day, just one day to enter. There is a day of resolution. 
which is what we call repentance. You have to make up your mind one particular day to enter. We are not born into this narrow way. You must first of all make up your mind to enter. We were all born into the broad way that leads to destruction. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. If we were born into the narrow way, the narrow path, there wouldn't have been any reason for Jesus Christ to come. But we were all like lost sheep, gone astray, heading for destruction. So Jesus Christ was sent. And he says, this is a way. Walk in it. This way leads to life. And it was never a shame to tell us the way. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He is the way to the Father. There is no other way. So if you are on the Broadway and you are praying, and you let me tell you something. You can be living your life as a lukewarm Christian, as a lukewarm Christian, and still get some levels of miracles. There are some things you could get by faith. Remember, even the sinners that came to Jesus Christ, they got miracles. None of them went home empty-handed. All of them that came, even in their sins, they were not all righteous people. Remember Jesus Christ saying, you are sick, you he said, your faith has made you whole, but go and see no more. Your faith, you are living in sin, but because you have faith, your faith has made you whole, but go and see no more. So, the, uh, you can get some level of, you can have access through God's grace to some levels of miracles. You can get some healings. You can even pray, lay hand on the sick, and they could get well if they have faith. Let me tell you one thing. Even if you are a minister of God or you are a Christian, you could be living in sin. And then you pray for someone, or you pray with someone who is sick, and God can heal that person, not because of your prayer, but because of the faith of that person, and because the Lord honors his name. So the fact that the person got healed doesn't mean that you, your lifestyle has been approved by God. This is why a lot of people get deceived. They believe that anybody that performs miracles is a child of God. These are the very things that the devil will use to deceive mankind. Matthew chapter 24, verse 24. But for false prophets, false Christ, false teachers, they will come and they shall perform great signs and wonders. So, for what? For what? To deceive the very ones that profess the name of Christ in sincerity. To deceive them and to deceive the gullible. But today, you, we, we, the, the people say, oh, if not, if he's not a man of God, then this person would have gotten healed. Let me tell you something. The woman with the issue of blood was not healed by Jesus Christ. I mean, the healing came from Jesus, but Jesus did not intentionally heal her. It was her faith that healed her, not Jesus Christ. Even Jesus Christ was kind of Someone touched me. And the disciples were kind of, Master, but everybody is touching you. You might have missed on this crowd and you're saying someone touched me. Jesus said, he explained to them that virtue left me. Someone touched me. There was a kind of touch. Every I know people are drunk and people want to touch me. If today, probably want to take selfie with Jesus. Jesus Christ said, this touch is not an ordinary touch. Someone touched me. Power left me. And the woman came forward. When Jesus was insisting that someone touched me, the woman came forward and said, please, uh, it's me. I have a problem. 
and for 12 years this has been my problem but immediately I touched you the pool of blood dried up Jesus didn't lay hand on the woman he didn't it was a woman who secretly went there with her fist and took the healing it was her fist that healed her and not Jesus healing her consciously it was her faith so you can even go before a, 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 a you can be in the midst of a crowd where a false pastor fake pastor or a false prophet is ministering and you do you have no idea that this man is false and then you are just believing in God and trusting God you can get your healing I'm not saying that if you don't see the fruit of the spirit but the person is bearing false fruits of the spirit which is hypocrisy I'm not saying you should go there to look for your healing because a lot of people say oh I'm going there is between me and my God but I tell you there are dangers the ground Many of these people, the ground is electrified. You could, there are churches or congregations you walk into today and as you are entering through the door, as you are passing through the entrance, your soul, your spirit enters into a cage. So we have to be careful. I'm not trying to encourage that. But what I'm saying is that he could be false, but your faith could be genuine. And then you get healing. Look at what Jesus Christ says here. Immediately, he wants about the path that leads to life and once again, the path that leads to destruction. Verse 15, he says, Beware of false prophets. Why? Because they are going to come to you and tell you it doesn't matter. Don't worry. Oh, Jesus Christ died for your sins. You can live your life. Just say a short prayer and you are flying to heaven. One saved, always saved. Jesus Christ wants us. Now listen, let me show you something that is going to shock you. Especially for those of you who believe in one saved, always saved. He said in verse 22. Okay, look at verse 21. Not everyone that seeth unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? These are people who genuinely prophesied in the name of Jesus Christ. These are people who cast even out devils. Listen, we have to be careful. These and look at verse 22. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. These are people who did miracles in the name of Jesus Christ. But there were things in their lives they never repented of. Or they were genuine Christians, but later in life they dived into sin. They crawled into sin and never came out of those sins before they died. And Jesus Christ is going to tell them on that day that depart from me I never knew you I never knew you you that work iniquity it is not the miracle that is iniquity it is not the signs and wonders that is iniquity it is not the casting out of devils that is iniquity it is not a prophesying that is iniquity these are people who genuinely use the power of God you can come before the presence of God Almighty and if you have been a false prophet 
You can't come before the presence of God Almighty and lie against Him. If you took your powers from the devil, you dare not even open your mouth in the presence of the holy angels to say, Lord, I did this in your name. When you knew that you never did these things in God's name. If you know that you use Satan's power, you dare not even open your mouth to say that. These are people who genuinely work for God. But there were sins in their lives. They never repented of. And Jesus Christ is going to tell them. Even though I used you. You are now cast away. Because even when you preach to others. You refuse to discipline yourself. Remember what Paul said. That I beat my body and bring it under subjection. So that when I have preached to others, I myself, I may not end up becoming a castaway. You can work for God and still end up in hell if you refuse to repent. You can be used by God, but if you fail to live by example, if you fail to live to practice what you preach, the very words you preach, we stand against you on the last day. That is the truth. The truth is bitter, but we have to speak it. And these same people come before you, those false prophets, and tell you that don't worry, Jesus Christ is that. Listen, it is the Jesus that died that says the way is still narrow. He is the one that says the way is narrow. That the broad way where you can have girlfriends, have boyfriends, sleep with them, and masturbate, and watch pornography, and drink alcohol, and become drunk, and play all sorts of uh, gambling, and do all sorts of things. Those things will lead to destruction. You can be a Christian, you can be a Christian and do the very things you used to do in the world. How can you profess Christ? How can you say you were born again? And you still continue to do the very things that took Jesus Christ to the cross. The very things that made him to be seen for us. The very things that he came to die because of. How can we go back to these same things and find pleasure in them? There are lots of people who open the Bibles today and they find, they look for loopholes around God's word. They look for explanation. They use the word of God to excuse their lifestyle. Listen, let me tell you. It doesn't matter how much knowledge you have about God's word. It doesn't matter how many scriptures you can quote from the Bible. If you don't apply the word of God, the truth to your life, the truth is this one. If you don't apply it to your life, you're going straight to hell. Today, people now believe that all oh, you can divorce as many times as you want. So long as you have some reasons, you can divorce and still be a Christian. <laughs> and there is chaos in the church. Imagine a situation, a man divorces this woman and gets married to another one in the same congregation and divorces this one and gets married to another one. And another man is getting married to this your ex-wife and another one is getting married to this ex-wife and then you divorce this one and you go before the ex-wife of that man that is with you ex-wife and you get look at the confusion everywhere uh, i listened to a man of god who was preaching and he said all oh, these things were not, act not actually jesus wasn't actually talking about divorce jesus was talking about separation that you don't just separate from your wife like that uh that divorce is legal that jesus listen in the beginning it wasn't so for God created them male and female. 
not a male and females. One wife, one husband. No adultery, no fornication before marriage. It tends my heart that today fornication is, is, is tolerated. If you're single, oh, you can be faithful to one man. You can be faithful to one girlfriend. So long as you know sleeping around, it doesn't mean anything. In the early church, if you are caught in the act of fornication, you will be suspended. There are congregations today, this is a bit of truth, there are congregations today, some congregations today, if you decide to suspend everyone that commits fornication in the church, there will be nobody left in the pew. Sometimes even in the altar, there will be nobody left. If you suspend every single person that commits fornication or commits adultery in the church, everybody will be... I'm not saying there are no elect of God in the church. Very much where there are God's elect in the church. The way, the path to heaven is still narrow. And we must continue to remind ourselves. Some years ago in Cathedral, while I was the, the head of the media department, I told them, I have no problem with you, young girls and men, getting married to yourselves. But if I catch you, if you're fornicating, I will suspend you. I won't wait for the church authority to come and tell us what to do before we do it. I told them, this media group is my congregation. So long as a Bible exists, and so long as I am alive, and so long as I am the head of this media department, I will suspend you outrightly. If you commit fornication, I will suspend you. A lot of churches, they only suspend you when you get pregnant out of wedlock. Is pregnancy a sin? Pregnancy is not a sin. It is what brings a pregnancy outside wedlock that is a sin. So we should address the real issue. When we see people getting pregnant in church out of wedlock, we make them feel like they are the worst sinners. What about those who got pregnant and I and killed the baby? So it is not even the pregnancy that is a sin. It is a fornication. It is the adultery that is a sin. And it is high time we address the real issue. How many of us today in church have been deceived? To believe that you can live your life the way you want. You can go to the to, to nightclubs and dance with prostitutes and live your life the way you drink. You like you drink alcohol, get drunk, live your life, eat anything, drink anything, put on anything, and you are still flying to heaven. It never works like that. Heaven is for those who do the will of God. Listen to this passage. Luke chapter 13, 23 to 30. Listen to the very words of Jesus Christ and let's not deceive ourselves. Because it is because of these very things the wrath of God is coming upon the children of disobedience. If we say we are in Christ, but don't live the life of Christ. If we say we are Christ-like, but don't do the things that Jesus Christ does. If we hate the very things that Jesus Christ likes, and we like the very things that Jesus Christ hates, how then are we Christ-like? Because we see people who live opposite lives, opposite lifestyles. And they still claim that they are Christ-like. They are Christians. This shouldn't be. That's a wrong impersonation. How can a criminal claim to be a saint? How many of you, if you are a criminal, you're a drug addict? 
How many of you can be proud? With you with your rocks on. With your daddy rocks. How many of you can be proud to go before a crowd and say, Oh, as a matter of fact, my father is a president of this country, and I'm proud to be his son. I'm proud to be his daughter. Every sensible person should be ashamed that they are not living up to expectation. Because you don't expect the shadow of a president to be a drunk, to be a prostitute. But why is it that we prostitute? We kill people. Why is it that we commit abortion? We are murderers. We do all sorts of illegal things. We live very dirty lifestyles. And we are not ashamed to claim to be the sons and the daughters of God. So there's a lot of confusion in, in, in the world right now. Is it not shameful that if a Christian lady dresses modestly is it not shameful that when a christian lady ties her head and wears a nice dress that doesn't expose their, their bodies people go before that christian lady to ask are you a muslim many christian sisters have told me this those who dress modestly they say people ask them, are you a Muslim? Is this not a shame? Because all some people believe is that a Christian should open their cleavage. A Christian should bask the whole of their flesh in the sun. They believe that a Christian brother should have tattoos. They believe that a Christian brother shouldn't dress well. So when they see you dressing well, they think, oh, this cannot be, this person can be a Christian. This could probably be a Muslim. This is a shame. But remember, you are the light of the world. Let your light so shine before men. If you are listening to me and you dress the way you like, you are not a Christian. Dress the way Christ wants you to dress. If Jesus Christ was to come today and he says, I'm in a stadium waiting for you, how would you dress to meet him? Would you put on a bum shot? Would you put on a bikini? If he is to go and if you were to meet him on the beach, it's so shameful seeing Christian men and their wives on the beach, seeing Christian ladies on the beach. Putting on bikinis and they take pictures. How can you, who say you are a Christian, how can you take private pictures when you're putting on undies, underwears, and you put the pictures on a world wide web? This is a shame for you to associate yourself with Jesus Christ. If you call yourself Live your Christ and you don't behave like Christ, you will answer before God on the last day. Listen, man, listen, woman, the way is still now. If you want to go to heaven, please shame the path you are right now. Examine yourself to see if you are still in Christ. If you are not in Christ, you better repent now. I examine myself every time. If I tell you the truth and don't do the truth, I will still end up in hell. Oh, so you, you, so you think that I am exonerated because I'm a preacher? Okay, let me tell you, even today, the Lord told me, if you do this thing, I will punish you. Just this morning. He gave me an instruction and he told me, if you do it, if you disobey me, I will punish you. And I have received instant punishment. Some of you think that you can live your life the way you want because somebody told you that you are on your way to heaven and that you are flying to heaven. It is a lie. Now let me tell you one bit of truth. Some of you think that heaven is easy. It is not easy. 
And I'm talking about my private life online. Let me tell you this. 2011. I don't like talking about this because it is my pain. 2011. When I was posted to St. Andrew's Cathedral. The Lord told me. That the church. They are posting you to. Don't marry in that church. Don't marry in that church. And you have no excuse. To commit fornication. And I lived there for 10 years without being married. People made all jest of me. Even some men of God, they talk bad at me. He told me, you have no excuse to commit fornication. Thank God I skated through. And I never committed fornication in any day. Even though there were times I almost backslid. But God helped me. Do you think heaven is easy? Do you think the way is broad? Do you think that the broad way you are now leads to life? Imagine being a pastor in a church for 10 years. 10 years. Of marriageable age. And he tells you, don't marry in this church. And he never told me, oh, you're going to stay here for a number of years before you leave. He didn't tell me. He didn't tell me, oh, when it was... When it's so, so time, you can get married. He didn't tell me it was just last year. Uh, 2022, he told me that. It was just last year. 2022, he told me that at so, so, so age, you can get married. Some of you think you are serving God when you are serving your own will and you think you are entering heaven. Do you know? Let me tell you something. Do you know there are ladies I buy sanitary pads for? Do you know there are ladies I pay their school fees? Even at the university. Some of them very close to me. But I, I dare not touch them any day. God will kill me. You think heaven is cheap? One day my accountant... I'm a charity organization. Some of them even think that I am impotent. You can't wallow in sin and live in sexual immorality and still sleep and wake up in heaven. It doesn't happen like that. Do you think our God is a God that compromises standard? One day he told me, the sin I'm warning you, if you don't change, I will cast you into hell. God is the only judge who will cast his only begotten son upon the altar of sacrifice and slaughter him because of the sins of the world. God is the only one who will turn his face against his own only begotten son because of sin. And Jesus Christ cried, cried Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Do you think heaven is easy? If Jesus was forsaken because of sin, you think he will allow you to go into heaven with your Lord of sin? Because you said, a prayer with your mouth. Do you think God will allow you into heaven if he drove Satan, Lucifer from heaven? You think he will allow you there? If he couldn't tolerate sin in heaven, you think he will allow you into heaven? Listen, nothing unclean 
goes there. It is a beautiful place. You have to resolve to follow. One day, I was talking to my accountant. She's a female. And she asked me, why are you so serious? Is it that you won't get married at all? I told her I will get married. Because I was telling her, I said, I have gone, I have traveled too far. That if any lady dares to try to make me fall, I don't take it lightly at all. I have traveled too far. I have crossed too many rivers, too many oceans, too many mountains. That if you, because I'm assisting you, I'm helping you, if you come close, I was telling her about the lady, I was paying the school fees of her children. And she wanted me in bed. So I blocked her. And I was telling the accountant that when it comes to this area, I am harsh. I don't try to rebuke anyone that wants to pull me down. Because I know the consequences. And she was asking me, he said that you will never get married at all. I said, I will. Oh, so you think I'm illegalistic. So you think I am just on my own inventing laws for myself. No. This same word that binds you and I is a word that says no fornication. And no immoral person will enter the kingdom of heaven. If you like, live your life the way you want. As a matter of fact, there are some of you that when people make jest of you, that oh, you are impotent, you can't talk to a woman. You want to prove to them that you are potent, that you are a man. How can people make jest of you and you drop your cross to prove to them that you are man enough. Let me tell you something. A man of God once laughed at me because I told him I had no girlfriend. Some of your pastors are like this. If you tell them you have no girlfriend, in fact, they don't even want to hear it. They'll call you that you're being legalistic. Their messages will kill your zeal for holiness. Some of you are pursuing miracles. And because you see miracles happening, you think God is there. You think the presence of God is there. So you think you can live your life the way you want. And God will open heaven for you. Listen man, listen woman. The path to heaven is still narrow. If you don't change, you will find yourself in the lake of fire. And it will be too late. Why don't you call yourself to order? Let's read this passage. Matthew 13, 23 to 30, verse 26. Then shall ye begin to say, We have eaten and drunk in thy presence, and thou hast taught in our streets. But he shall say unto them, I tell you, I know you not whence ye are. Depart from me. All ye workers of iniquity, there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. When ye shall see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, and ye yourselves thrust out, and they shall come from the east and from the west and from the north and from the south, and shall sit down in the kingdom of God. And behold, there are last. We shall be first, and there are first, we shall be last. Did you hear that? Can you hear that from Jesus Christ himself? Look at what the disciples said. Then said one unto him, Lord, are there few that shall be saved? Yes, there are few people that shall be saved. Not the multitude that says, Lord, Lord, because a lot of people don't want to be on the narrow path. There is a man of God in Nigeria right now. 
He has churches all over the world. He has over 500 orphans he takes care of. He has schools, hospitals. But do you know what? There are very clear evidences, cases in the law courts, of him impregnating some of these children. Some of these orphans. Sorry to say not children. Because the one that is on right now is she said she was 18 years old when he first slept with, he, with her. They've gone to do DNA tests in Ghana. And the DNA test confirms that he is the owner of the child. The case is in the court right now. And I see men of God coming out to defend his actions. That even if he is his son, one who calls himself a bishop will say, even if he is the father of the child, why is it that if a man of God, uh, if, if, a, if a girl sleeps with uh, an engineer, they don't confess. He does sleep with a doctor, they don't confess. When they sleep with a man of God, they say, I want to confess. You are a man of God. Why don't you close your legs? If you take care of children, why take advantage of them? If you have a hundred people, if you have one thousand people, and you sleep with three to satisfy your urge, is that right? The standard is not us. I'm not saying that the man of God cannot fall into fornication or adultery. That's not what I'm saying. Remember, I just said that for the time I was in cathedral, if not that God helped me, I would have fallen. I knew it. If you do listen to my messages, you will know I do say you can serve God and stand to the end with your own power. If God doesn't help you, within the blink of an eye, you will go to It is by grace. Why is it that some people can sleep around and they tell you it doesn't mean anything? It matters a lot. The way is still narrow. Look at what Jesus Christ said. Strive to enter at the straight gate. For many, I say unto you, we seek to enter in and shall not be able. Shall not be able. Many will like to enter, but they will not be able to enter. They will be willing. Many are called, but few are chosen. Some who are first shall be last. And some who are last shall be first. Many will try to enter, but they will not be able to enter. Have you let go that life of sin? Have you allowed that lifestyle to go? Do you still shit on people? Do you still lie? Today it is believed that if you are a man, if you cheat, that's the problem. People even say, don't go through your husband's phone. If you go through your husband's phone, you are looking for trouble. Why? It is because men have become so wicked and unfaithful. Matthew 19, 23 and 24. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, Very I say unto you, that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. And again I say unto you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. You think heaven is easy? You think the way is broad? It is not broad. Before we listen to this last scripture, Ephesians 5, 6 to 7. Let no man deceive you. Let no woman deceive you. Let no false prophet deceive you. Let no fake pastor deceive you. With vain words. For because of these things, come the wife of God upon the children of disobedience. Be ye therefore partakers. Be not ye therefore partakers with them. 
God had taken those things because it was because of these very things that Jesus Christ came to die. And now that he has died, if you partake in these very things, you will be rejected in the last day. The way is still narrow. The way is not broad. God knows your weakness. You see. He knows your strength. Don't say you can't follow. I am not following because I am a very strong Christian. No, I am following because it's just to be a good. Follow him. If you want to follow, if you make up your mind to follow, please follow. For he will give you his angels to guide you. He will release his spirit upon you. He will release his guardian angel to guide you. And you will always hear a voice saying, this is the way, walk ye in it. The Lord is righteous God. He wants us to be holy. Just as he who called you is holy. Be ye holy. For it is written, Be holy, for I am holy. Be ye holy in no manner of conversation. Following Christ is a walk towards perfection. Your walk before God may not be perfect. Even though he said, be ye perfect, even as your heavenly father is perfect. We walk towards perfection and the perfection of Christ still sits up for us. But we can continually walk in sin. Even a professor makes mistake. Even a master makes mistake. We are not talking about those mistakes. A Christian does not live in sin. But a Christian may fall into sin. And when he falls into sin, he quickly gets up, cleans up himself, and moves on. He takes up his cross on a daily basis and continues to pursue after his master. He doesn't live in sin. He doesn't plan to commit sin. But if he is cold, if he is not watchful enough, he can make mistakes. He can sin against God. But a Christian does not sin. And when he sins, he quickly repents. John said, I write unto you, little children, that you sin not. But if anyone sins, we have an advocate in heaven, Jesus Christ. For he is the propitiation for our sins. Not for our sins only, but for the sins of the whole world. Are you willing to rise up right now? Let me put my contact details on the screen. If you want to contact me, if you want to renew your relationship with God, these are my contacts on the screen. Feel very free to reach me. I'll pray with you. If you want to start afresh, I am very much available to help you. This is why I'm here. Let's pray. God help us you children. For many of us have been deceived to believe lies instead of the truth. Many have been deceived. Even those of us who are standing right now, Lord, help us. Because many of reasons so many Christians who were even more on fire than us have risen. But they fell. Because of forgetfulness. Because they couldn't guard what has been given to them free of charge. Lord, help us. For those of you who want to repent, pray for you that the Lord will see you. Can you just say this prayer after me? Say, Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins. I come to you today that you forgive me all my shortcomings. I repent sincerely from my heart. Write my name for the book of death and write my name in the book of life. I have been living in sin, but I have resolved today never to go back to my evil ways. Blood of Jesus, wash me. Make me whole. Lord, write my name in the book of life and help me to follow 
UTPF. Lord, help me to overcome my sins and my sinful ways that I am repenting of today. Lord Jesus, I ask that you release your grace upon me, release your spirit upon me, and help me to follow you to the end. In Jesus' name. May the Lord God Almighty, who we serve, help you to follow me, help you to serve you to me. May the Lord God Almighty, the God we serve, help you to follow me to me. Please, if you have not subscribed to this channel, please subscribe to this channel. Because I am you do. And don't forget to turn on the notification bell. I also encourage you to like, comment, and share this video so that we can beat into happy. Those of you who have been supporting our ministries, we say, Lord God Almighty, bless you. Truth is rare. Truth is very scarce. Those of you who are chosen to keep this ministry alive, may the Lord God Almighty continue to bless you. It's a beautiful life in Jesus' name. Let's pray. The Lord God, thank you for your prayer. We ask the Lord God, as you continue to be your children, continue to help us, follow you to the Lord. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray. Thank you and God bless you. See you next time. Bye bye.